With the trade deadline just three days away, there's a lot of news going on about the Toronto Raptors and potential deals that could go down, including the Brooklyn Nets being interested in OG Ananobi and Brian Windhorst making cryptic comments on a podcast regarding the Raptors and the Nets talks. Additionally, we have Shams giving an update on Fred Van Vliet and his whole situation, the Suns being interested in him following uh, the missing of Kyrie Irving and him going to the Dallas Mavericks. Also, the Raptors played last night and Scotty Barnes had an electrifying performance, so we'll talk about that, as well as a couple of Raptors legends that could be on the block ahead of this deadline and a whole bunch more in this video. So without further ado, let's jump in the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is the Brooklyn Nets being interested in OG and Anobi. Now, you know, the Nets, they trade away Kyrie Irving yesterday and the whole NBA is watching on what's going to happen with the whole Kevin Durant, the whole Brooklyn Nets situation right now. And it seems like by all accounts, by all reports that the Brooklyn Nets are likely to try to ride out this season and Try to see if they can build a win-now team, a team that can compete in the playoffs around Kevin Durant, given how good he's been this year. And uh, that leads us to the Toronto Raptors and the discussions that have recently been going on. Basically, this is coming from Real GM saying, the Brooklyn Nets are reportedly interested in trading for OG and Anobi from the Toronto Raptors. And their ability to trade for him or another potential uh, member of that core could have improved following their trade of Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks. So that's how Re Real GM is sort of summarizing everything, breaking down that the Nets have interest and they have some pieces that uh, could end up going to the Toronto Raptors in a potential package. And, you know, OG Ananobi is one of our best trade chips, assuming Siakam's off the table, which by a report from Kevin O'Connor I broke down this morning, he might not actually be. But, uh, I mean, you look at his stats on the season, it makes sense why, right? 17 points per game, 6 rebounds, 2 steals a night, one of the best on-ball defenders in the league. Shoots a high clip from behind the 3-point line and could be available as he's looking for a change of scenery, according to multiple reports. So, you know, if the Nets are trying to compete for OG Ananobi, they'll have to compete with the New Orleans Pelicans as they have Dyson Daniels, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy III, Jose Alvarado, a lot of young players that can throw in a package to Toronto, Portland Trailblazers with Shaden Sharp, you know, Josh Hart that could be on their way out right? Uh, the Grizzlies, their young core, there's the Suns, right? With all their draft picks, the Nets would have to fork over a big offer. And when I talked, when the initial reports came out, the Raptors and Nets were talking, right? I kind of wrote off OG Ananobi potentially going to Brooklyn as I just didn't see them as having the, the pieces to potentially facilitate a trade. But then Brian Windhorst and Zach Lowe came out today and talked about this uh, topic further. And I'll uh, give a little summary on what's going on here. Essentially, Windhorst said, I still don't know what the Toronto Raptors are going to do. Zach Lowe talked about how the Nets and the Raptors have certainly been talking over the last 24 hours. Windhorst responded saying that the Nets could flip some of the assets they acquired in the Kyrie deal to pry away OG and Anobi from the Raptors. You might have something there with the Nets, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. So, uh... You know, and the article sort of talks about the summary about how the Nets acquired Dimwitty and Dorian Finney-Smith. The Raptors were interested in Nick Claxton the last two off-seasons, actually. You know, a couple years ago, there was rumors about the Raptors potentially trading away Chris Boucher for Nick Claxton, Norman Powell for Nick Claxton, different deals. You know, over that time span, Nick Claxton has definitely taken a step up. This season, his trade value has certainly increased, but that's what the article is referring to there. But then there's the quote that uh, has a lot of Raptors, Twitter Raptors, you know, people on the internet uh, buzzing a little bit. As Windhorse basically said, I'm just telling you, the Nets are offering ability with uh, the Toronto Raptors has suddenly become very interesting, right? So the ability with what Toronto has is suddenly very interesting. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, uh, that's interesting. You know, Brian Windhorst, he's a guy that loves to make cryptic comments, right? This summer we had the Rudy, what's going on in Utah? And Rudy Gobert gets traded a half a day later. He was the first guy on the James Harden and uh, the Philadelphia 76ers trade this time last year. So Windhorst has his insiders, has his ways, and he loves to put out his knowledge cryptically out into the media. So a lot of Raptors fans are taking a look at this and saying, hey, could a deal potentially be going down? You know, especially when they're talking about OG and Anobi. And I don't know. A lot of Nets fans, when I talked about the, the deal yesterday, I thought that if the Nets and Raptors were going to talk, it makes more sense that Fred Van Vliet is in a particular package given the Nets just lost their starting point guard. And Fred Van Vliet, Ky uh, Kevin Durant, they've had their battles in the past. I'd say KD has a lot of respect for Fred. And you know, it just makes more sense in terms of what the Nets could offer the Toronto Raptors in terms of a package back. Now, I was saying Nick Claxton for Fred Van Vliet would be a guy I'd 
want to see come back and return in a potential package on that front. But I had a wave of Brooklyn Nets fans come in the comments section and basically say, hey, there's no way uh, There's no way the Nets only center, only real guy is a big man. It's going to be in one of those packages. Essentially saying that the guy averaging 13, 9, 2.6 blocks a game, still very young, 70% from the field, right? Uh, they don't want to let him go. And I, I get it as a Nets fan and stuff. But if you're getting OG Ananobi, if that's the talk, if that's the player that you want, you're going to have to fork over some assets. And Claxton, Cam Thomas, some draft picks that they have would have to be coming back to Toronto on a potential deal on that front. I don't imagine there's any other way they're going to be able to outbid other teams if those guys aren't in a potential package. But let me know what you guys think about those potential deals down below. And if you're interested in sports betting, if you're interested in all that sort of stuff, there's also always some fun stuff coming around uh, trade season. And you can check out the Cool Bet Sports Book down below. And there are sports book regulate in Ontario and available all across Canada, and you can bet on every single Raptors game, NBA game, sporting event really in general. They have a lot of futures that have been shaken up given the trade deadline. So if you have a hunch on deals that might go down and you want to buy in early, you can definitely go to CoolBet and make your predictions in terms of who will win the chip, conference finals, all that sort of stuff, you know, on the app. And they have some interesting futures regarding LeBron James passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar soon in terms of uh, all-time score highest scoring player in NBA history and you can bet on a lot of crazy things you can uh bet on what quarter it's going to be in against what team it's going to be at if the the field goal will end up being assisted if it's going to be a three-pointer or two-pointer or a free throw bet on all that sort of stuff at a cool bet so definitely uh check out the sports book appreciate them for supporting the podcast but the next thing we're taking a look at is uh, a Van Vliet trade update following the Kyrie Irving blockbuster now Fred Van Vliet is a guy that well, again, similar to OG Ananobi, there's been a lot of talks around in the season. He's had a roller coaster of the year, and we're currently on a high as Fred Van Vliet has been playing a lot better. His stats have sort of uh, been progressing, not regressing, progressing to the mean of what Fred Van Vliet's usually doing. 20 points per game, five rebounds, seven assists, you know, rounding up close to 40% from the field, 34% from behind the three point line, getting a half, steal and a half a night. So Fred Van Vliet is definitely a guy that would command a lot of value on the open market, even though he is a free agent this off season, just given his leadership, his championship pedigree, but he is a free agent. Some Raptors fans don't think the team should end up giving him one of those big contract extensions or re-signings, given the fact that that's what it's going to command, especially with teams like the Orlando Magic willing to offer a close to a max this off season for Fred Van Vliet. And that has led to a lot of trade discussions. And Shams gave us a little Shams gave us a little update yesterday, essentially saying or today that the Suns are known as a potential suitor for Toronto Raptors guard Fred Van Vliet. But once Kyrie Irving became available, uh, Phoenix shifted its focus to the Irving market. But obviously, Kyrie Irving is uh, no longer available as he is a dude that is on the Dallas Mavericks. So basically, this is what they had to offer the for uh, Kyrie. Chris Paul, Jay Crowder, and a first-round pick, the sources said. The offers made within the first 18 hours, and it was believed that three first-round picks could have clinched a deal, multiple league sources said. So the Suns never added those picks and failed to make a better offer beginning to lose interest in, Irv uh, in Irving as time went on. So the Suns are expected to be incredibly active over the next several days uh, to add to their roster. So that's coming from uh, that's coming from the Athletic, from Shams, from uh, you know the t discussion over there. And it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So they were dead set. They were looking at uh, Fred Van Vliet. Kyrie got off the market. They're looking to upgrade at the point guard position. They're willing to deal away Chris Paul and Jay Crowder. Now... If we're trading away Fred Van Vliet, I don't want Chris Paul back. I don't want Jay Crowder back. They're not the types of assets we'd want to come in return for Fred Van Vliet. However, could a three-team deal happen, you know, if the Suns are willing to move off of those pieces? I mean, a report came out a couple days ago that the Suns aren't willing to trade Chris Paul ahead of the trade deadline, and then literally these reports come out after that they offered him up for a... Uh, Kyrie Irving like immediately after all those reports are coming out so Chris Paul could be on the table they could be looking to still shake up their point guard position Devin Booker's just coming back from injury right now and Fred Van Vliet is a guy that's championship tested he has that championship pedigree so you know maybe the Suns would be willing to give up a couple of their key pieces to upgrade at the point guard position but Eric Kareen Raptors uh Raptors bleed oh. Beat reporter, I can't speak right now, also had some insight in terms of Fred Van Vliet's value right now, saying Fred Van Vliet's trade market remains a mystery. So many of the teams that figure have uh, figure into having cap room this offseason earlier in their development curve. So giving uh, four years, uh, 
So giving four years to an undersized 29-year-old point guard doesn't seem tremendously likely. Orlando could be the outlier, but I don't think Houston, Oklahoma City, San Antonio are in the Fred Van Vliet market. On the other hand, does any player uh, who might move for a, for a single desirable target, whether it's a young player or a draft pick with upside, move the needle for a contender as much as Fred Van Vliet? Crucially, the Lakers uh, and the Clippers both have obvious needs at the guard position, and both teams are have teams have demanding superstars. So, if I were to bet, I'd say the Toronto Raptors keep both Fred VanVleet and Gary Trent Jr. And if so, they better be ready to fight to retain both those guys in free agency. So uh, then he goes on to talk about Chris Boucher, but. Interesting stuff there from Eric Kareem. Obviously, the Lakers and the Clippers could make big offers for Fred Van Vliet. Those deals could end up going down, but you know he's not expecting a deal to potentially happen. And you know it depends on uh, what's what potentially could you know be offered back to the Raptors. Obviously, the Lakers have those two first round picks. They missed out on Kyrie Irving. LeBron James is pretty vocal in the media about trying to upgrade at that position. So we'll see if a deal could go down there. And the Lakers were willing to offer Terrence Mann. First round pick. They're trying to get off the Luke Kennard contract. So they have some pieces that could potentially be on the way out there as well in a potential Fred deal. So do you guys think a deal will happen? Let me know in the comment section below. Next thing we're taking a look at is Scotty Barnes had an electrifying game against uh, the Memphis Grizzlies last night. I won't do a full game recap. I tried to go live following the game, but the Wi-Fi has just been real shaky out here in, uh, you know, in the house in Newfoundland. So sorry, apologize for that. But we do have to touch on Scotty Barnes's fourth quarter in this one, and he's showing the Raptors why it's uh, time to give him the reins. Whether we're dealing away a bunch of our players or not, he uh, showed out. Now, the overall box score for the game, 16 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, nothing too, too crazy for Scotty Barnes, but I believe 14 of those points, a lot of those points came in the fourth quarter, and he was attacking the rim at will. He just looked unstoppable, right? He looked like... He flashed that all-star, that superstar potential that a lot of Toronto Raptors fans were hoping. And the Raptors got a big win against the Memphis Grizzlies. Yes, without John Morant. Yes, the Grizzlies have been on a little losing streak lately. But it's uh, still a big win for this Raptors team. And, you know, doing it on the backs of uh, Scotty Barnes playing really well, right? Uh, Precious Achua having a really clutch dunk, you know, to end off that game. It's pretty solid. And Nick Nurse ended up winning a challenge. You know, that was a uh, pretty timely, one of the best challenges in Nick Nurse's uh, coaching career. So it was a fun game to watch. It was a fun game as a Raptors fan to get a W. Obviously, there's a lot of Raptors fans hoping for the retool, hoping for Raptors therapy sessions following uh, every game, given the fact that uh, people want Victor Webb and Yama and see this season as sort of a wash. But I don't know. I said, until the trade deadline happens, until we see a move go down, right? Uh, I'm still rooting for this team to win games. Even if I'm cool with, uh, you know, I'm cool with losses. I'm done getting stressed out over it. I still want to see this team win and play well. And Scotty Barnes made me happy last night. So shout out to Point Scotty doing his thing out there. But the next thing we're taking a look at is uh, the Toronto Raptors are the Lakers plan B for the trade deadline. Now, we just talked about Fred Van Vliet. Uh, and how he wasn't, uh, how he could be a potential option for the LA Lakers and all that sort of stuff. Well, a report has come out essentially indicating that the Lakers will remain active on the trade market, exploring deals for both small and large packages. In the wake of Irving to Dallas news, two teams that have repeatedly popped up as plan B options for the Lakers are the Utah Jazz and Toronto Raptors. According to league sources, both teams have been linked to the Lakers in recent weeks and have starter level players who have been uh, rumored to be available. However, talks remain preliminary and nothing is imminent. So they also talk about the Spurs, the Hornets, and the Bulls are also other teams to watch ahead of this year's trade deadline. So this is all coming from The Athletic. And, you know, Raptors are a plan B up there with the Utah Jazz. I'd imagine guys like Fred Van Vliet have a lot more value than a player like Mike Conley, who's had a very up and down past couple of seasons. But, you know, I'd already talked about the packages the Lakers could have. You know, future first, get off the Westbrook contract, maybe an Austin Reeves or something like that. But I don't know. It's, we'll wait to be seen. Nothing seems to be imminent on that front. But uh, the next thing we're talking about is a Kyle Lowry trade in coming in. You know, before I uh, before I made these chapters, I caught a second report that came out right before recording. But uh, Kyle Lowry could potentially be on the move from the Miami Heat as a report came out, essentially indicating that. Uh, oh my goodness. Well, the the images are not popping up. But uh, the Miami Heat are desperately trying to trade away Kyle Lowry. They're not happy with this contract. It was something Riker and I kind of were shocked that he got $30 million per year for three seasons. why the Toronto Raptors didn't bring him back and why we're happy with the Precious Achua return. And now 
it's an albatross contract that the Heat are trying to get off of. And I don't imagine they'll be able to get an asset back for Lowry, but it's, uh, you know, Kyle Lowry's the Raptors' groat. I hope he gets sent to a team where he can compete for a championship, or unless it's the LA Clippers, because I don't want to see him in a Clippers uniform. And another Raptors legend in DeMar DeRozan could potentially also be on the move as reportedly DeMar DeRozan's gaining a lot of interest on the open market. Uh, but the Chicago Bulls are still unlikely to deal him. So, you know, two Raptors legends, two guys. You know, I got their, I got DeMar's photo still up there. I have DeMar jersey there. I don't have the Lowry jersey up there anymore, but two guys that I wouldn't mind seeing uh, have a change of scenery, maybe team up somewhere and push for a championship. With Toronto, who knows? But, folks, you guys are the best to make it this far. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the Cool Bet Sportsbook, and we got a lot of videos coming over the next few days, so definitely uh, subscribe to the channel. Helps us out big time. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.